Welcome back to Weather for Weather Geeks, everyone. Welcome to spring in the Northern Hemisphere. Spring is officially just a little over an hour and a half old. As of this recording, uh, the sun's direct rays over the equator at 524 Eastern Time this evening, marking the official transition from winter to spring. Of course, we didn't have much of this during the winter season. No, we didn't have much snow, but uh, spring is officially here, and the days are getting longer at a rapid pace. Uh, we're picking up uh, well over two minutes of daylight per day at this time of the year on our way to the longest day of the year coming up in a few months when we have a sunrise at 5.50 and sunset at 8.58 on June the 21st. All right, uh, capturing uh, the equinox on the satellite is always an interesting exercise. This was around sunrise this morning. If you look carefully, there's the sun right there, right over the equator. And the the terminator, uh, the difference or the uh, line between day and night kind of lined up due north-south like that. The tilt of the Earth makes it so that this satellite picture looks a little different depending on if it's the start of winter or the start of summer, but on the equinox days in March and September, it's kind of just a straight line from the North Pole to the South Pole. It is the day of the year. We have this, of course, at the equinox in September as well, where the sun rises due east and sunset is due west. And since Route 224 in Mahoning County is a due east-west thoroughfare, that means the sun is going to go down this evening right over 224. Now we do have some clouds, some high clouds have filtered in early this evening after a crystal clear sky for a lot of the day today. So, but uh, these high clouds will actually, you know, should make for a pretty colorful and nice sunset. Now that not only meteorological winter, and, but uh, astronomical winters in the books, I wanted to uh, take a look at uh, where we've been in terms of winter severity, the combination of winter storms and snowfall and temperatures. This is going to go into the record books as one of the least snowy uh, winters on record. Of course, not at the top, probably, but uh, one of the least snowy. Um, but when you factor in the temperatures along with the lack of snow, uh, this right now, uh, on this product uh, from the uh, Midwest Regional Climate Center, uh, makes it so that uh, this was the biggest cakewalk of a winter we've ever had when you factor in, or at least on record, I shouldn't say ever, but on record, uh, that we've ever had when you factor in snow and temperatures. Mild winters, this color right here, up in the purple, that's extreme. Of course, we haven't had very many of those in the last handful of years, but uh, yeah, this winter was really, really something. Now, we're not done counting snowflakes just yet. I think we'll probably see some snowflakes in the air at times late this month and into the month of April, as we oftentimes do. Um, but for all intents and purposes, the uh, official winter season is now over with, and this week happens to be Severe Weather Awareness Week in the state of Ohio. Pennsylvania will have their Severe Weather Awareness Week in a few weeks as we get into April. All week we're going to be talking about different aspects of severe weather online, on air, and on this uh, video. And one thing I wanted to cover this evening is something I get asked about sometimes. Hey, I live in an apartment. Obviously, I don't live in a house with a basement. What do I do if there's a tornado Warning. Well, the principles in an apartment building are the same as if you lived in a house. You want to get as low as you can, and you want to put as many walls between you and the outside as you can and get away from the windows. Uh, so this means a couple of things. Uh, if you live, you know, on a top floor, go down to the first floor and, you know, find a utility closet or go under a stairwell, you know, something that's a little more secure than being up high in an apartment building. Uh, make friends with someone on the first floor of your building. Make them a cake. Make them some cookies. Because maybe you'll want to seek shelter in their apartment should severe weather threaten. We did an interesting story this evening on 21 News at 5 and 6 about a uh, new system that's uh, being implemented in, or it's being tested at least, in Mahoning County to kind of supplement the outdated you know, tornado sirens. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you know my stance on tornado sirens. Um, they are woefully outdated and Every year, some of these sirens go down, they malfunction, they're just unreliable, and very, very few people should be relying on them as a primary source of getting weather information. We did a story about Mahoning County uh, going to more of a mobile device-centered approach. I think more counties should go that way. Things you can do, though, independent of, of where you live, uh, a NOAA weather radio. Now, NOAA weather radio is much more of a prominent thing in tornado hotbed states alabama mississippi kansas oklahoma places like that but you can get them around here you can get them at walmart you can buy them on amazon 25 30 bucks relatively inexpensive they can be battery powered and so if you lose power your NOAA weather radio is going to stay on and you'll be updated instantly when the weather service issues a severe thunderstorm warning a tornado warning a flash flood warning things like that the storm tracker 21 app we think it's the best weather app you can get in our area and part <laughs> pardon me one of the features of the app 
is the ability to customize what kind of alerts, what kind of push alerts you get, uh, whether they be watches and warnings and other alerts like that. Make sure that you have wireless emergency alerts, WEA, W-E-A, uh, enabled on your on your uh, device. Whether you're an Android user or uh, an iPhone user, you can find that under your settings. And on iPhones, it's under notifications in the settings tab. Make sure that's on. And of course, whenever we have severe weather threatening and uh, occurring, uh, you can find our coverage, of course, on TV, internet live streams, the Storm Tracker 21 app, WFMJ.com slash weather as well. There's lots and lots of ways to stay in the know, and all of those ways are better than tornado sirens. All right, looking nationally this evening, what a surprise. Most of the action's out west. You know, this is kind of just the same old weather map we've been showing, it seems like, forever, with unsettled and cold weather out west and benign weather out east. Now, tomorrow will end up being a cloudier day than today, especially in the afternoon. But it will be a warmer day today. Then we'll, uh, we'll get into the 50s in the afternoon. Tomorrow night into Wednesday, we might get grazed by a shower or two. I don't think it'll be a lot of rain. Better chances for rain probably Wednesday night, heading into Thursday as this cool front approaches. There might even be a thunderstorm in the mix on Thursday, but it will be mild ahead of this front, despite a good chance for some rain, which should crack 60 Thursday afternoon. Now, this front, it's interesting what happens with this front Thursday night into Friday. How far south it settles before kind of stalling and becoming kind of stationary uh, will... Uh, I drew that backwards. Uh, stationary front might form Thursday night into Friday morning somewhere in Ohio and so southern PA. If it goes far enough to the south before it stalls, Friday could be a decent day here locally. If it stalls a little farther north, say north of I-70, then we're going to keep the chance for rain in our forecast for Friday. Either way, though, I think Friday night into Saturday, that front will lift back north, bringing chances for rain back into the area. But no harsh cold coming anytime real soon. Our averages rise from 48 to 53 over the next 10 days. We'll be well above average Thursday. I mentioned we'll crack 60. A little bit of a retreat Friday. We'll be above average with highs in the 50s over the weekend. And although a little bit of back and forth is on the way as we uh, wrap up the month of March next week into the following week, I don't see anything on the modeling that would suggest harsh cold, kind of like we had over the weekend. Oh, it was cold over the weekend. We had temperatures in the 30s, enough of a breeze to create wind chills in the single digits and teens. Northern Trumbull and Mercer counties even had a little bit of accumulating snow over the uh, over the weekend. Uh, I don't see anything like that coming back anytime real soon. We'll do more updates on the longer range, including a look ahead to the month of April and overall trends as we uh, go deeper into meteorological spring in future editions this week of Weather for Weather Geeks. In the meantime, thank you for watching on this Monday evening, and I'll see you back here on Tuesday.